I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Living in the riches of my Lord and King, I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Committed to Him in everything I do believe He'll come again. And I know one thing I'm gonna do till then is learn to live in the blessing of Abraham. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on the Covenant Living Broadcast. I'm David Weeder. This is my wife, Lynn Weeder. We're so excited about the series that we're in. Praise God. So you know, you know what you need to do. You need to make that cup of coffee or grab a lemonade or whatever you like and pull the chair up to the other side of this table with us. Grab your Bible and your notebook because we are going to be getting into the Word. As always, we'll be studying the rich things of the Lord and we want you to be a part of it. Thank you for joining us today. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this another opportunity to share your word and the revelation that you have given to us and the assignment that you have given to us. We're so grateful to be a part of what you're doing. And Holy Spirit, as always, speak through our lips, think through our minds, and by direct revelation, impart to every person hearing or watching these broadcasts, even more and beyond and above what is actually said in English, you impart the revelation that you would have them receive from these messages to enrich their lives in every area. And we thank you for that. We ask it in faith, and so we know that it's done in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Well, today we are going to get into some actions <laughs> of love. Because as we've discussed recently, <laughs> the love of God has been shed abroad in every believer's heart by the Holy Spirit, Romans 5.5 5 says. And yet, we see instances, uh, we're going to see it here in just a few minutes, in, like for example, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Paul's talking to the church at Corinth. So everybody he's talking about has had the love of God shed abroad in their hearts. And yet, he makes this statement. I can speak with tongues of men and angels, mm -hmm. but have not love. Well, what's he talking about? Well, he's talking about putting on love on purpose and acting in love and acts of manifestation of love. And I'm way into the message. <laughs> so, so let's get into this and uh, and just kind of move on into it. Just to kind of catch you up briefly, um, we were talking about things that we know about love. And we went down through uh, point one. It's been shed abroad in our hearts, which we just discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, you have to purposely put it on have it and walk in it daily. Jesus said, continue in my love. Number three, you can grow and increase and excel in love. And we talked about that. Uh, number four, you have to put off certain <laughs> things, anger, wrath, filthy communication, blasphemy. And again, that was written to people in the church as well. And they didn't even know about traffic and all of that stuff. That's right. They were not tempted to do, you know, single finger salutes or anything. Well, I don't know. They might, they have. might have. Those chariots could be rough. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, then we talked about number five, love covers the multitude of sin. And we talked about if uh, if you if you if you're not sure which way to go, always stay on the side of love because it will cover the multitude. If you miss it, stay on you're staying on the, but you're staying on the side of love, it'll cover the multitude of sin. And then, and um, you know, a way that the Lord recently put it to me, um, actually in uh, correcting in, in, in a way of correction for me personally in some things, he said, if you are walking and demonstrating and, and continuing in love, you may miss it. But in that condition, I can get through to you 
and I can make the changes and the corrections and get you back on track much easier than if you're not continuing in love. Well, when you're practicing love with each other or just between you and God, you have a tender heart instead of a hard heart. When that, that love is what helps soften that heart. Yeah. And it'll heal your neck too. <laughs> That's, okay, so the Bible talks about stiff-necked. Don't be stiff-necked. You know, so, so if you've had a stiff neck and you've been stubborn about some things, it can heal that neck. Love will heal it. So anyway, and then we just basically touched on uh, point number six, how love expressed through actions. Mm-hmm. And we talked about and went and, and read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, where it talks about the love of God constraineth us. Mm-hmm. And that particular Greek word is interesting because it means constrain in the way we think of as far as hold back, but it also has an element of motivation yeah. to it. So the, 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 when you're walking and continuing in love, you may be motivated to take some actions or it can constrain you from taking some actions. Like you, you know, <laughs> so you, you think about something, you, man, you can fire that text, and you're just about to hit send, and the love of God <laughs> holds, holds that finger back <laughs> from hitting that send button. Now, you can choose to ignore it and hit that send button, but yeah. that's not practicing the love. Yeah. You know, Brother Hagen used to say, you know, the, Lord, the Lord's not going to, he'll let you stop on the way home from this very meeting and rob a convenience store if you want to. You're not supposed to, but and he'll you be can do it. He'll be talking to you the whole time. Don't be doing this. Don't be doing it. It's going to mess up. It's going to mess things up. <laughs> but, he'll, but you can do it. You can ignore the promptings of love. But you need to be the other way. You need to be pressing into, and that's what this, this whole series is about, is pressing into love and the actions of love and the communications of love. Because, let me remind you once again, Galatians 5, verse 6, faith worketh by love. No love, no effective faith. And so it's all tied together. And so we're really doing this study and into love because we all need, particularly in these last days, (laughs) we got to have some strong faith. But the only way you're going to have strong faith. Yeah, highly effective, mighty faith. That's what some of that that word worketh, faith worketh by love. Those are some of the definitions of that Greek word worketh is efficient, effective, and mighty. Well, my brother and sister, you just look around this place these days. You need some efficient, effective, and mighty faith to operate in victory, just to survive, but to operate (laughs) in victory in these days, in these last days. You got to have it. And the only way you're going to have it is to have highly developed and increased and excel in love. Glory to God. So now, let's go ahead and look over at Colossians chapter 3. Are you already there? Yes. All right, why don't you go ahead and read that, all the way through verse 14. All right, starting in verse 12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against you, against any. Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Glory to God. So here he lists out some actions that if you're continuing in love, then you need to put these on. But you notice that it says in verse 12, the very first two words are put on. on. That denotes something that you're going to have to do on purpose. It's not automatic. Now, if you yield to it, the prompting will come up automatically because the spirit of love himself is in there. So it'll rise up, but you have to put it on once the prompting is there. Oh, we talk about putting on the armor of God. Mm-hmm. And um, training your flesh so that it knows the exercise, so that it knows the difference between right and wrong through development, through exercise. That's in the book of Hebrews. And so, these things have to be done on purpose. 
They have to be put on. And notice, these are action words. Bowels of mercy, putting on bowels of mercy, that Greek phrase there is also the phrase that in the Gospels where it talked about Jesus was moved with compassion. That's that same phrase. Putting on bowels of mercy is being moved with compassion. That's an action word. You can't move inactively. <laughs> he moved with compassion, glory to God. And kindness, acts of kindness. I'm reminded of a time I was preaching in California and I was actually headed out to go to the meeting. And I came down the elevator and I exited the elevator and I was going down the hallway towards the um, uh, lobby area where they were, gonna, were waiting for me. And I was probably 40 feet away from the elevator and I passed a gentleman in the hallway and he had, he had some big boxes in his hand. And I passed him and I actually went a couple steps. And this is something else, pay attention to. This is a part of renewing your mind. I went a couple steps because I'm thinking about the meeting. And then I thought, I bet he's headed for the elevator. He's got his hands full. So now I had a choice. I had the prompting. You know, what can I do for this man to help him? But my mind's thinking about getting to the meeting. Now I have a choice. Am I just going to keep walking? Or am I going to pay attention and extend, put on kindness? So I turned around, walked back down the hall with him. Sure enough, he was headed to the elevator. So I pushed the, the, the up button for him waited till the doors opened, asked him what floor he was going to, and reached around and pushed that button for him. And his mouth was open. And he looked at me, and this is what reminded me of it. He said, thank you for your kindness. It resonates with people, and it shocks people in this day and age because it's not the norm. Mm -hmm. People are so wrapped up and caught up in the busyness of life and for a while, there really was a pattern, a, a thing of people saying, okay, we're going to do a random act of kindness. And most of the time, we think about doing that random act of kindness to strangers. How about you do some random acts of kindness in your household? Mm -hmm. Sometimes that is something as simple as, here, I'll fold your laundry and put it away for you. Because our kids were in charge of their own laundry by the time they were 10 to 12 but there were times that I would offer to do it for them as a random act of kindness. But not as a random act, as a prompted act, when God prompts you to do that. Sometimes it's sitting down and listening to what your spouse is saying without your phone in your hand. Mm -hmm. There's things like that that you can do that express that love, express that kindness, and again, we start thinking about this outside our house, holding the door for a stranger, paying for somebody else's coffee. But how about you go to one of your kids and say, hey, do you want to run out and get some ice cream, get a coffee, and sit there and listen to them and let them open up about what's going on in their life? Mm -hmm. Well, our, our, um, our middle son, has a, he, he's, there's a movie, an old movie, that he really, really, really likes. And I saw that, you know, one of the, sometimes the theaters do the, you know, the throwback movies and stuff like that. Classics. Classics, yes. And I saw where it was gonna be uh, coming up recently. So I was just, I surprised him actually just this morning and said, uh, hey, what you doing, you know, Wednesday? Wednesday? I saw that your favorite movies, you know, gonna be shown in the theater over here. And he said, well, he said, uh, I'll see if maybe some friends can get together and, and go with me. And I said, well, I, I thought maybe you and I would go. Are you going to be in town? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. And so that's, you know, you're, that's something you're doing on purpose. That's not our normal. But I was looking for ways to be a blessing to him, mm -hmm. you know. <clears throat> Husbands, and this goes for wives too, but you, you, you got to look for ways and sometimes you got to be just a little insistent. Um, <laughs> last night, we had a, we got a, we usually have a lot of things going on, but we got a lot of things going on right now. And last night we were you know in the bedroom getting ready for the evening and everything, and I noticed that she's still over there 
trying to hang up clothes and stuff. And I look, and the majority of those particular set of clothes were mine. And I said, sweetheart, why don't you lay those to the side and I will get them in a little bit and just relax. And she's like, but I was just gonna, I went. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> and it's not, I mean, you know, I'm, I was like, I told you. That kind of defeats the purpose, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but you can be a little bit, uh, sweetheart, I, I, I really mean this. Now, please just rest a little bit and let me get that for you. And that's kindness, kindness. on purpose, looking for ways. Because a lot of times we read these verses and we're like, oh, yeah, I got to be kind. I got to do this. But we don't think through what is a practical application of this. And just like we also teach self-defense and we talk about, think about if I was in this situation, how would I respond? So your brain doesn't have to problem solve when you're in the midst of it. We read these scriptures and do not take it and think through, yeah. how can I apply this in everyday life? How can I do this? And that's what we really enjoy doing. We really enjoy getting real. If you go to, if, you, if you've been to our website, it's just simple, as easy as I could make it, davidweeder.org. <laughs> you, just, you just go there and it's, there's, a, there's a reason. It seems very, very redundant because we talk about having real faith and a real God to achieve real victory and real life mm -hmm. over real problems. Because we want to, we want to stress that there's too much. Well, let me just turn over here in the Amplified Classic version uh, to First John. Now listen to this, First John, uh, chapter three, and it gives an example here too. You know, it says if anyone has this, this is verse seventeen in the Amplified Classic. If anyone has this world's goods, resources for sustaining life, sees his brother and fellow believer in need, and yet closes his heart of compassion, of love against him, how can the love of God live and remain in him? Now, listen to this next verse, verse eighteen. Little children, let us not love merely in theory or in speech, but in deed and in truth, in practice and sincerity. That's what we're talking about. That, that's, Those deeds, that sincerity, yes. that reaching out. Absolutely, and, and all of these things, I just lost my place. <laughs> all of these things listed out there in Colossians, um, we talked about kindness, humbleness of mind. Well, that's, what, what is that? Just and not thinking that you're too good to do something. You know, one of the, one of the, one of our, we, we, we're on social media and stuff because we like to reach people. We're every available voice and it's a voice. Otherwise, yeah, I'm not sure I'd be on there. But anyway, um, we posted a video last Christmas of you and I up on the roof at your dad's house in Arkansas, putting up Christmas lights ourselves. Could we have paid to do it? Yes. But it's something that we enjoy doing and we enjoy doing it ourselves. And so we get on the parka and we shimmy up the ladder and we get up there and we were putting the lights on. And we, you, you took some pictures and everything, and our, our social media person put a neat little video together and the process and then the after and all that stuff. That thing got more responses and views and likes and stuff like that than a lot of other things that, that we posted because it's real. And people can identify that because they're shimmying themselves up, <laughs> up the ladder and putting the Christmas lights on. And that's um, what and a lot of those... And doing those things for other people speaks about the love of God that's in you. Mm -hmm. My grandfather lived in not the best neighborhood for an elderly person to live in. It was starting to get rough. But when my dad came in and mowed his grass, my grandfather's grass, he also mowed the elderly woman that lived next door to him. And everybody in the neighborhood knew. And that actually provided a level of protection for my grandfather. You wouldn't think mm. mowing grass could protect my grandfather oh, yeah. in this neighborhood, but they knew 
these were kind people. These were Christians and not just Christians that told everybody they're going to hell. And not just Christians in theory yes. or in speech. It was indeed. And so that everybody res in the neighborhood respected that. And my grandfather fell one day in the ditch, couldn't get up by himself. And this group of teenagers came and was like, oh, Mr. Tucker, can we help you? And they walked him in, got a phone and called my parents and said, hey, he was down. Instead of robbing him, instead of beating him up. Well, and, we're all about being real. So let's, yeah. let's expand on that a little bit. Her grandfather is a very Caucasian. A crusty old man. Crusty old, old and man. And they were living in an environment that they were having to paint over gang graffiti daily. And the young teenagers that stopped to help him were, were part of a, a gang. A, were <laughs> part of a, a young black gang. But kindness and love demonstrated and made more effect on those young people. And what you sow, you will reap. And that's just the way it works. Glory to God. We just barely made it through one of these scriptures for today. <laughs> well, it's because we're making it real and giving real Absolutely. life examples instead of just be kind, say a kind word. Now, a kind word goes a long way, but so do actions. And here's the, and then we, we talked about the humbleness of mind then. Meekness goes right along with that. Here's, we'll, we've got time to touch on this. Long suffering. <laughs> Patience. Forbearing one mm -hmm. another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against you, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. Forbearing one another. Long suffering, patience is, is what we're talking about here. And going back to what you said, it's actually a lot of times, even though it should be the reverse of this, a lot of times we are so much more patient with strangers, with strangers than we are with family. And that, I know why. Because <laughs> you're around the family all the time and you're comfortable and you, you know, get to practice you know, that 70 times seven with family. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because <laughs> you're, you're there for all it. 70. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody cuts you off in traffic, you don't even see their face. You know, usually you see another part of their hand, but um, it's easy to go. They're faceless, nameless. They're over there in their vehicle or they're. Mm -hmm. They're over there in the store or they're across the parking lot or, or whatever. And so it's easy to forgive. Most of the time, though, we don't even think about it. You need to forgive on purpose yeah. as an act. But, um, but forbearing one another, you, that means you're, you're right there. <laughs> you're right there with them and you choose to walk in love because it covers the multitude of sin. So what if they wronged you? We're gonna get. We're gonna look at that uh, next week. We're gonna look more at an actual list of love does this, love does this, love does this. But today was all about the actions and demonstrations and examples of kindness, of love, of forbearing one another, of things like and that. And in family, you get to find out about his mercies being new every morning. Every single morning, you, you gotta get up and say. <laughs> That, that child you gave me, and he says, new mercy. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Especially when they're just like you. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh, that's, uh-huh. <laughs> Speaking of actions of love, don't go anywhere. You need to see this. Hello, my name is Ryan Weeder, and I'm here with David Weeder Ministries. And I just wanted to talk with you a little bit about salvation and how easy it really is to commit your life to Jesus and accept Him as your Lord and Savior. You know, God's a good God. Jesus loves you. He loves you more than anyone ever possibly could. And He wants to be a part of your life. You know, you it's really easy. It's really easy. It says right here in Romans chapter 10, 
in verse 9 that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. In verse 10, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And that's as easy as it is. You know, if you've been listening here on David Weider Ministries and you want Jesus to be a part of your life, you can do so. It's just that easy. Accepting him into your heart, believing with your heart, confessing with your mouth. And if you'd like to do so, we can do so right here and now. And I encourage you to just pray and repeat after me. Father, I want you in my life. I believe in my heart and I'm confessing with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Jesus, I ask you into my heart. I thank you for being a part of my life and I commit my life unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. And I just want to welcome you into the family. That's all there is to it. And I encourage you to keep on listening. You'll continue to keep growing here with the ministry. Welcome again to the family. It's great to have you. And if you have any other questions, you'd like to contact the ministry, feel free to go to our website. We've got tons of resources there for new believers and old believers, both are the same. You'll be blessed by it. You talk about an action of love. My goodness. That's why Jesus did it. Hebrews 12, 2, 3, 4 says it was for the joy that was set before him that he endured such opposition, such meanness from people, such suffering. And it reminds us that he even... He resisted to the point of blood coming out of his pores. That's how much agony that he was under. But he loved us. For God so loved the world. If you prayed that prayer with Ryan today, I want you to let us know. The address is, is just P.O. Box 156, Hazlitt, Texas, 76052. That's David Weeder Ministries. You can go to our website, davidweeder.org. Shoot us an email, send us a letter, smoke screen if you, I mean, smoke, <laughs> smoke signals, signals if you can. Let us know that you have joined the family because we want to rejoice with you. Because here's the thing, God loves you. He is always, always for you and never against you. Lynn and I love you so much and always remember, that Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Thank you partners and friends for helping make this broadcast possible. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram. You can also listen to our broadcast on iTunes. For more information about our ministry, contact us at davidweeder.org. Join us again next time on the Covenant Living Broadcast.